Yo, what's up, beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome to Dom's Media Zone. So recently, I've been experimenting a little bit with street photography, and I quickly found out that it's not as easy as it looks in other people's videos. So it's very much hit and miss, where some pictures come out looking really good, and some pictures not so good. And sometimes it happened that I took a picture that I thought was really nice, but I really underexposed it or overexposed it or messed something about it up. And then when I came home and put the pictures on my computer, I thought to myself, well, these pictures that are really cool but underexposed or something wrong with them, let me try and see how much I can fix them up using Canon's Digital Photo Professional 4. Now, I've got one example in particular we're going to go through today, so I'm going to take a look at this picture right here and try to see if we can get it looking really good. And this is going to be converting this picture that's been taken in color to a black and white photo that makes it look kind of in line with the street photography theme of black and white photography. So let's see if we can use Canon's DPP to make that picture look really good. So if this is something that interests you, stay tuned and enjoy. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're having a look how to use DPP or Canon's Digital Photo Professional 4 to take a photo. This photo is a photo I've taken in London during the Christmas period. And this is kind of a street photography photo. I was playing around with a lens and it didn't come out too great. It came out underexposed, but it is an interesting photo. So if I click on edit image, you can see there's a lot going on in this photo. You've got the Christmas market, you've got people having fun and enjoying the festivities. So I wanted to take this photo and convert it and transform it into a photo that's a black and white photo that's really crisp that really looks much better than what it does right now because I kind of do like this photo so today's tutorial will be all about transforming a photo into a black and white photo that looks really good so now the first thing we want to do to start transforming this photo we're going to go into the basic image adjustment tab and then find an option that says picture style now the easiest way to turn a photo into black and white is just go and and choose monochrome over here. So the minute you pick monochrome, all the colors get taken out of this photo. Now, as you can see, this photo is rather dark. So what I want to do is increase the brightness. So I'm gonna go over here to the brightness adjustment and just drag it to the right until I think it looks more or less good. So I kind of like it here. So this is kind of a good brightness in my opinion. So I'm going to leave it there. Now the next thing I want to do is scroll down over here until you get to your histogram over here. Now on the histogram, you'll see this little graph here. Now the histogram represents the black colors. So on the left hand side, you've got all the really dark colors. On the middle side, you've got all the mid tones or your gray colors. And on the right hand side, you've got all the white colors. So as you can see in this photo, majority of the photo is kind of a gray color. So that's why this histogram looks like this. It's more in the middle because this photo is made up mainly of gray colors. So what we want to do is we want to see if we can drag this middle line, which represents the mid colors or the gray colors. And let's move it a little bit to the left, just to bring it up a little bit more so as you can see there we've increased the brightness of just the mid colors or the gray colors and that looks pretty good in my opinion now you could go ahead and take this line here which represents the black colors you could make the dark colors a bit darker if you wanted to but be careful not to go too much so you don't want to kind of have parts in your photo that are completely dark and then the the line on the right hand side which represents the highlights i mean we could move this as well and you can see now the highlighted parts start increasing but i think i'm just going to leave it with more of kind of like a grayish look to the highlighted things in my opinion Opinion, this looks really good now if we come down to here to this contrast section we can adjust that as well so I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit just to give it more like a sharp crispy looking kind of feel to it and then under shadows so shadows control the dark parts of your photo so if I decrease the shadow all the way you can see the dark parts become even darker so if I go back to the middle to zero what do I want to do do I want to increase the shadows a little bit maybe I do that looks kind of cool like this so I'm going to increase the shadow which means make them a little bit brighter and now over here the highlights what I could do is either drop them all the way lower and then you can see the highlighted parts become more gray or I can move them to the right hand side to make the highlights look a little bit brighter what I'm going to do I think I'm just going to keep them as neutral because I like the way that looked in neutral now because we've chosen a monochrome photo you can see down here you've also got options such as toning effects so if you click down on the toning effect if you didn't want a black and white photo 
photo but maybe a sepia tinted photo you could go ahead and choose that down here you've got things like blue and purple and green if you wanted to use those but for the purpose of this photo i'm just not going to enable those at all now here you've got sharpness so do i do i think this is sharp i think this is really good these defaults that i've got set up which is strength 4 fineness 2 and threshold at 4 works really well so i'm just going to leave it at that and now already this photo is looking really good if we click here to see the before and after you can see the difference it's quite huge we've taken a dull photo that wasn't really great at all and we've made it into something that looks pretty good a few more things we want to do so i'm going to scroll up here and i'm going to go into this tab over here which is the lens adjustments tab which is the perform image lens correction tab and what i want to do is i want to load lens data it's already loaded and it's already optimized but if you don't have this loaded go ahead and click on this button and it will give you the information of the lens that you've used and then you'd have to import it so click start once you've selected it and then it will import your lens data there are other videos i've got about this tab and about this subject so go check out my other videos for that but what i want to do over here is just correct the distortion so i want to see if there was lens distortion and there was so i'm going to enable that and as you can see if i switch this on and off it changes quite a bit so this is the program correcting the distortion which is kind of like the oval shape of the lens can distort your photos a little bit so this just makes it more flat and more natural how it's supposed to be and that's all I'm going to do in this tab for now and then I want to go into this crop and rotate tab so we can kind of crop the photo how we like it so I'm just going to select that tab click on my picture and you can see this little square shows up with the borders what I want to do is just crop it a little bit so I want to kind of make this photo something like that I want the roofs to be very close to the edge of the photo and I don't particularly want the sign here on the right hand side I just want to do something like that that and I don't want to cut off this lady's shoes so I'm just going to do this and I think that looks pretty good and over here you can also angle it so if you think the angle's wrong you can just slightly adjust your angles over here so this allows you to kind of move your photo but I'm just going to leave it like that at minus 50 this line here lines up with the top of my photo so I know it's looking straight and then lastly what you can go and do is adjust the image tone curve so if I jump into my tone curves you can see now our photo is cropped and it's already looking really great and I'm going to choose the luminance option over here curve and likewise what this symbolizes is your highlights your black colors and your mid-tones like we did previously so if I put a point here and I drag it down you can see the photo gets darker if I drag it up you can see the photo gets a lot brighter so what I'm going to do is just maybe drag it up a little bit have it a little bit brighter and if I put another point here I can make the darks the black colors a little bit darker if I wanted to until it looks good you can add extra points here if you wanted to and you can drag the highlights as well and change those around or double click to get rid of the points so the highlights I think should be a little bit less something like that nothing major it's kind of almost the same like it was just really really mild adjustments over here and am I happy with the result of this photo I am you can see at the bottom there's a fork here if I just wanted to remove that fork let me go ahead and do that really quickly so to do that you want to jump into this remove dust from images or apply a stamp tab over here and allow your photo time to load all right now our photo is loaded what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit maybe more than 25 let's zoom in 100% and if I move down and locate the fork on the ground I mean we could leave that fork but I just want to show you how this works for those that haven't seen this before so if I go select copy source over here what this will do now it will give me this little pointer over here and I can choose where to copy from so if I click once on my mouse left mouse button and then I move my point you can see that little cursor behind it's copying exactly where that little crosshair the one on the right hand side is it's copying it over to the left hand side and there we go perfectly the fork is now gone so I'm happy with the result let's go back to our normal view and then view image in full size window again and as you can see the little fork is gone and the photo is looking good so if I do a before and after comparison we turn this dull kind of looking photo nothing too great to look at into what I think is a really good kind of street photography photo in black and white that captured the whole kind of Christmas vibe going on here and that's the video for today that's how easy it is to take a photo and turn it into something that looks really great and that's the end of today's video I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it helps you out and taught you something cool so if you did like this video as usual do give me a thumbs up it really helps the channel out a lot and also do consider subscribing 
I'm going to try release a lot more cool videos in the future. So as always, thanks for watching, stay safe, take care and goodbye. Thank you.